You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 60, We Need Your Help, a fan show live from Voices of Dentistry 2018. In this episode, Wes and John are going to show you for the first time our interview with several of our fans. That's right, fans of The Dental Guys live from Voices of Dentistry. In this episode, you'll hear a lot of requests for what people would like to see more on our show, and we're also going to share with you how you personally can get involved with determining the future and direction of our show. So listen for the all-stars and the favorites and see what you pick up on this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by The Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, The Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes The Dental Guy. And we are kind of excited about the show because it's so different than anything we've ever done before. And as you probably found out listening to the intro, you know that this is the first fan interview show that we've ever done before. It's live from Voice of Dentistry 2018 conference out in Scottsdale, and we're going to be getting to that shortly. But Wes, as we, as we were getting ready to uh, uh, record this uh, intro to the show, you know, Wes, I got on the got on the line, and he's like pumped up, man. He's like, I was like, how was your night? He goes, oh, it was amazing. And he starts going into all the stuff that he did. And I just want to tell, tell everybody, Wes, like, what were you up to tonight? Well, so we had a Botox gathering <laughs> as the girls, have t- <laughs> have, as gathering. they've, that's what they've, they've come up with now versus like a party. Uh, it's now a, <laughs> it's not facial, a party anymore. It's a, it's a bo- Botox it. and facial aesthetic gathering. <laughs> <laughs> gathering. Oh my goodness. Gathering Basically what faces. it is, is like you have a host that hosts a, a, a Botox party. And uh, we, um, the host uh, gets a little something or whatever, you know, uh, you know points towards free Botox, they, free, yeah, well, some of that, yeah, they get free, you know, towards their next treatment. Okay, but you know, basically, it's like a wine and cheese type thing at yeah. at you know somebody's house, and we have to have like our rule of thumb is that we need at least ten people uh, doing Botox, and okay. what ends up happening too is that I I show up, okay, as the doc, okay? Yeah. And literally, dude, it's awesome. I mean, we it is fun, okay? And because all your, you're never treating men, so you're always treating women, and they're all there to get Botox. They all want to look nice. I mean, it's awesome. fun. It's fun. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like it's pretty exciting. It is, it is. People walking around, laughing, having a good time, and then there's always, the, the fun thing about it is, is there's always the people that show up that have been dragged in by their friends. <laughs> She's never had not Botox. Sure they actually She's want never it. had Botox and she wants to talk to you. I love it. You know, and they're like dragging them along and like, I told her she's doing it. And, you know, they end up talking them into it, you know? And, nice. and of course, I take my time and spend time with them and do some facial mapping and talk a little bit about, you know, what Botox is and all that kind of stuff and then clinically what it, what it means for them. Um, you know, what else? What else is awesome is that this is kind of a practice leader, you know, or a not really a loss leader, but it, I kind of like call it a practice leader. It's going to lead you to our practice and what mm-hmm. we do. Mm-hmm. You're not going to make, you know, you're not going to make a living so much so on doing just Botox. And so, what other things that we do is we do facial fillers. And so, mm-hmm. for instance, uh, you know, we'll treat people's nasolabial folds. We'll do cheeks. Um, mm. implants. We'll do lips. Um, we treat the lower face mostly with fillers. And um, and what we do is we offer a small discount um, if they buy the fillers and schedule an appointment. So we have our appointment scheduling right there. We also, because it is a practice leader, they end up liking us, okay? And they like me, Hopefully, right? And, Hopefully, yeah. And, if you do, and, good. And they and they they ask more questions, and and we have we have scheduled we scheduled patients tonight for cleanings and new patient exams, 
And that's the thing is that now that they're in the system, Botox is kind of like, once you start it, most yeah. women continue it. It is a reoccurring revenue stream, and it sure. only takes about five to ten minutes to deliver. And most of the time, I walk in, it's already drawn up, and it's just boom, boom, boom. Well, so, and you know what I, you know what I love about this is the kind of patients that you bring into your practice. Boom. I mean, that's really. I mean, people talk all the time about searching for the ideal patient. And what's the ideal patient? You know, we talk about that at least from like the spirit continuum, for instance, we would call those the, the regenerative patient, the patient right. who doesn't just want to, you know, treat pain only when it happens, you know, they want to actually look better than they ever have before. Right. And those are the kind of patients who have high aesthetic demands sometimes, but right. if you can show them that you're about that and that you can help them meet their needs, then those are the kind of patients you want coming in there and telling you what else they want to change. That's right. Because, you know, you you start getting into when you get them past just coming to the party, yeah. you know, and get them into your office and it's, they like, oh, this is special, you know, yeah. and, and especially if you know what you're doing, you know. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. You have to come in with authority, I'm sure, right. and you have to show that you're, this is not just some fly-by-night, Right, you because, know, come you know, in there, you don't care, you don't know right. anything. You have to, I mean, it can't be the typical dental office. Okay. Yep. It can't be nasty looking. Yeah. It can't be the same paint on the walls that's been on there for the last 20 years. Right. You're not going to win patients over like that. It's got to look nice. Sure. And it doesn't have to be expensive to look nice. You know that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is these patients end up coming in, just like John said, they need implants, they want veneers. They want whitening. They end up becoming patients for life, and mm -hmm. it's just really fun. Um, you know, I was there for an hour and a half tonight. My, mm -hmm. I have a Botox champion, as I call her, and uh, she's a dental hygienist and that is big time into facial aesthetics, and they prepared well in advance for this. Um, our goal this year is to do one Botox party per quarter, and it turns out we have two scheduled this month. And so she has um, she has goals that she set for the team as far as how many units of Botox and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But basically, I showed up. I arrived at like 6.15. The first people started arriving at 6.30. They know why they're there. You know, they're there yep. to get Botox. And it's like, it's a machine. They really it make it fun. It's all laid out. And it, I mean, mm -hmm. I just roll in and I'm the doctor and people respect that. And they just, and it's, it is a blast. I mean, I thought about live streaming it uh, to not the dental guys, but to my actual um, my actual business Your page, office page. Yeah. And I think I might do some of that next time because that could be it, very interesting. It's really interesting. To What's see cool what kind to, of response you get. But yeah, I, I, again, I think the thing, like John said, is that these are practice leaders that lead mm -hmm. to the type of patients that both John and I really like, which is the patients that want to spend money on regenerative dentistry. Yeah, and people that people that value pyramid. people that value aesthetics mm -hmm. and well, speaking speaking of live streaming, um, just to segue perfectly hey, into don't forget the our episode. don't forget our just one more shout out. Yeah, you know, got to go, give a go shout ahead, out. Because, go give him, give him some love. Give him yeah, some love. because you know we were um, you'll you'll find as you as you get into the next few shows that everything we did at the Voices of Dentistry conference was live streamed, uh, including interviews at Spear Education. Uh, and it was all sponsored by Kettenbach, and they really did a, an awesome job uh, coming alongside us and supporting us to uh, get some equipment for live streaming and just being there for us, helping us uh, have some product at our booth that people could check out. And we got to interview uh, the general manager there, Dan, um, just an amazing uh, company to work with and really helped us out. So we really appreciate them being a sponsor. But this next, uh, this next segment, this next interview uh, is basically a bunch of our fans that were there to see us at the Voice of Dentistry 2018. And we just asked them to come on the show and tell us some things from this last uh, couple of years, especially this last year, that have really changed their practices as well as some things that they'd like to see in the future. And so uh, we're excited to show you this because I think you'll have some things in common with these folks if you've been listening to our show for a little while. So and stay tuned at the end, too, for a way that you can get involved with our show if you're a fan and there's things you want to see on our show. So here it is, Live from Voices of Dentistry 2018, the Dental Guys Fan Show. 
I want to say um, thank you to Craig uh, for being a longtime listener. And tell us, uh, before we introduce a, a, a new guest, which I think we're going to have to have a whole show for them because they intrigue us, you know, because we love what you guys do, you know, and what you're making. Um, but let's speak a little bit about Craig. But Craig, you've been a longtime listener of The Dental Guys, and we appreciate all the shout-outs and all the conversations that you've had with us on, on the Facebook. And uh, tell us a little bit about what The Dental Guys has done for you in your practice or listening to the show. Well, like I, uh, I was a big Hacks listener, and then I heard, oh, there's these guys called The Dental Guys coming out. And I was like, Pfft. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. oh, come on, another yeah. dental podcast. I right. don't, you know, we he don't need that. that. Yeah. Right. And then I listened to it, and I was like, wow. You know, because you guys broke down, you guys broke down clinical dentistry like nobody else, you know, really has. And it's like, it, to me, it's like having somebody break down a journal for me. You know, like it was like, it, but it was entertaining. You know, it was it was great to have that kind of clinical dentistry brought out the way that you guys did it and uh, awesome. I, I was hanging on every word I loved it I totally geeked out like I mean I, my favorite stuff was like the endo episodes oh you know, yeah when you guys went into I endo. recorded that in Plattsburgh dude <laughs> that one yeah That's I mean awesome. and, I mean it was like I, I you know it's just great stuff yeah if you haven't checked those out we have a whole series on uh, endodontics um, from access all the way to core and crown and really, it's some of our top listened to episodes. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people listen to those. Listen to that because I think it cuts through a lot of the, you know, I do it because this guy does it into mm-hmm. more into okay, well, why, why did things work and why, you know, why should you change your protocol and so, again, evidence based. Oh, yeah. So yeah. let me ask you totally. this: you totally. you have listened to the show for a long time. Mm-hmm. What would be a great show for us to create for you? Like, if you could say this is the ultimate, Craig show like this is the show that i've been wanting to hear from the dental guys for a long time what would that be i don't know that's a tough call like because I, I love we ask tough questions that, yeah you do <laughs> you do it's like megan kelly here right <laughs> <laughs> uh no uh i love when you guys break down when you guys go to shows and you break down okay. what you guys got out of shows like okay. that is like you guys go to the AO and then you review the AO meeting. Like yeah. that gets me geared up. Well, let me for tell you about a show bring. idea that we've talked about and see what you guys think about this. So, what if we went to the AO and we had a booth at the AO and we had some of the speakers from the AO come down to the booth and tell us about what they're presenting on the research? Would that would you? That I mean, would be awesome. You think that'd be big? Oh yeah. I mean, I feel fantastic. like there's a, maybe a niche for that. We're, we're talking about that. Like, like we could be actually be kind of like the post, you know, talk about the topic that they just discussed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they would roll down there. What do you think about a show like that? You think oh, it, I would love it. I would absolutely love it. Like, yeah. Because it's kind of like yeah. being there if you can't be there, you know, and like what was important, like boiling down. Mm-hmm. You know, right. The like nitty the gritty, day. the pearls. Well, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, you guys will sit and read an article and break it down into the, the scientific you know, well, really what <laughs> nitty gritty. Really and I'm like, matters. okay, so what are they basically saying? You right. know, <laughs> and, and then I can understand it. That's it's, good. It's, it's good. fantastic. Cool. It's great. It's good feedback. Yeah. So, so introduce us. Yeah, introduce to us to our guests. All right. Tell so, us who this is. So uh, I was searching for uh, an implant course that I could take and I could get some, some real hands-on kind of stuff. And I went down to uh, the Worley Implant Immersion course, and I got to meet uh, Kevin Friarley, Mike Worley, Ashraf Suaha, who's an amazing perioprosthodontist from uh, Tunisia, and uh, Chase White. And uh, so Kevin and Chase are involved with uh, surgical aesthetics and um, just learned so much from them and created a great network with them and with Joel Gonzalez. And it's just been like... It's like one thing, it's amazing with like Facebook and everything else. It's just like one thing leads to another, it leads to another. It's just connection after connection after connection. And I think that's what this, this whole meeting is about. So I told them about Voices of Dentistry. I told them about Dental Guys. I told them about all this stuff. And then they're like, oh, well, we're going to come down to that meeting and check it out. <laughs> we'll see you there. Yeah. Uh, we're inviting I, was like, ourselves. I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's so, awesome. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, just, they're just great. Kevin's got a ton of experience. It's, it's t- taught me a ton. And... 
it, it it's just great stuff. So what do you guys do and make? Just kind of give us the quick and dirty here because we sure. just have a couple minutes. <laughs> sure. So the quick and dirty is, you know, I'm a general dentist. I've been hug up on that microphone there. Yeah, yeah. I've been practicing yeah. dentistry for 30 plus years and uh, went to UCLA. I've taught at UCLA. Um, but I started out doing a lot of surgery. I love surgery. Uh, I did a general practice residency where I did a bunch of surgery. So, I, yeah, get that mic close. Yeah, just so I, I came out and uh, you know started uh, grafting right away, placing implants. Um, this was back when it was basically Brandemark and IMZ implants, and that was pretty much it. And you couldn't do Brandemarks unless you were a specialist. Right. So you know I was doing IMZs, and so I kind of you know just did my thing for many years, and then about you know seven years ago. Um, we started a bone graft company called Surgical Aesthetics. And so we have allograft and, and regenerative supplies. And uh, Chase White, who's here next to me. Chase, say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Glad to be here. So Ch Chase uh, is our partner and helps run the company. And uh, we've kind of morphed into not only a regenerative company, but really we saw the need for education. You know, for really, so now we're going around the country teaching general dentists how to graft, you know, how to do simple grafting, get started doing the grafting and, you know, help people on the same journey that I was on, you know, and mm -hmm. you do the grafting, you learn how to handle tissue, right. you, st you step into doing implants and... So let me just ask you, just sure. on, you sell bone, correct? Correct. So you correct. sell particulate bone? Particulate yeah. bone. What is the yeah. smallest yeah. size? Yeah, I was getting... John, <laughs> John, what, what is you this? took it from me. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> is mine. I, oh, what, man. What is the smallest si particle size? Cancellus. Cancellus or cortical cancellus bone that you offer? Uh, now it's 0.25 grams, 0.25 cc's. Oh, no. It used to be 0.5 and oh, now really? we're just doing 0.25. You can get can cortical cancellus, so, 0.25? 0.25, yeah. because here's what we're hearing. Interesting. And it's coming from Steve Chu. And I'm, I know you know who that is, sure, of course. and Dennis, Dennis Tarnow, because the cortical bone has a hard time remodeling Absolutely. as fast, Absolutely. and so therefore when we're doing this graft containment around our implants, whether it's provisional restorations or a fancy custom temporary sure. or custom tissue former per se, that we can see the cortical bone or even the cancellus, bigger particle size, becoming an irritant to healing. Yeah, it hangs around too long. Hangs around too long, so we need to move to these smaller, and I don't know of anybody, because I've looked, yeah. that's milling or shaving, whatever you want to call it, their bone at 250 microns. So you're saying is it 250 to 500, is that the range you would that's get? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things that's unique about our particular product is that uh, uh, our tissue bank, we're the only uh, dental supplier, so we can design our particle size and our porosity and how it's processed in a unique way. So our uh, mineralized cancellus, okay. not cortical cancellus, mineralized cancellus, has a, a unique uh, porosity to it so that the, the absorption of blood and the way that it, it uh, becomes a scaffold, um, it remodels quickly. Awesome. So you, if you go back in, you've had a, you know, a, a intact buckle plate, you've used the, our mineralized cancellus, you go back in it at uh, two months. and a half to three months, you see no particles. It's completely remodeled. That's improved. Well, that I'll tell you for our listeners that have been following yep. what we do with uh, basically the whole idea of the the you know dual zone socket technique, which of course is turn and choose whole sure. deal. You know that's kind of the thing that if you go to their courses and talk to them one on one, you say, "What are you using?" Yeah, they won't and, tell you, and they won't tell you. <laughs> really? But they will say that the the particle size matters, yep. and that they're shooting for a, a 250. So. I will just say right now, I'm interested. In I'm very finding interested. If you more. have a, yeah, I want to know more. So, so tell us. At, so yeah, how can we? How can people find out about your company? Where would they go? Chase. Right. So <laughs> I mean, we're obviously we have a website, surgicalaesthetics.com. We're very active on Facebook. We're active on uh, uh, Instagram, surgical aesthetics. Just search us. We're posting cases, you know, every single day. Everything from really basic, you know, how do you hold an instrument to do this type of surgery to here's a sinus surgery that you can get to if you follow along with our educational process and our, our courses and that kind of Very thing. Very cool, awesome. Um, and our product is, uh, we actually don't sell direct, so we're available from all the major distributors, Patterson, Shine, Benko, Darby, oh, really? Pearson, Very cool. Burkhart. Okay. So, you know, any of your reps, honestly, that's part of my job is to make sure that your reps know what they're talking about. Right. So if a dentist wants to get into grafting and they don't know how to or they don't know what to use, they ask their Patterson rep or okay. Shine or whoever, and they call me, 
And it's my awesome. job to make sure that you're getting awesome. the right product for your surgery. Well, Craig, thanks for yeah. number one for being here. Yeah, hey guys, thank you for doing such a great job. And uh, I know you guys don't make a ton of cash for doing this, but uh, <laughs> it's changed my life, and I enjoy oh, it. And I, and I wait for I, I look forward to every every two weeks. For an episode. Man, awesome. thank you awesome. so much. Yeah, you, awesome. you definitely have a couple of new listeners in us as well. So awesome. Thanks, thank so you so really much. It's really cool thank what you guys do. And if we do get an op- another opportunity, I'd love to tell you about some unique products that we have. Okay. Yeah, cool. Great. Yes. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, next on the show, we have Dr. Drew Burns, who, again, has been a longtime listener. We actually met him last year at Voices of Dentistry, which was pretty awesome. And since that time, uh, he's been... Get, he's been podcasting himself. What? And uh, what? that is pretty amazing. Look, so uh, I want yeah. to, yeah. yeah. And he even has mints to go along with yeah. it. So that's legit right yeah, there. Thanks, guys. You, so, uh, you inspired me. So, oh, yeah, so well, thank you, Hug first of all. Yeah. But, so tell us about, since you've been listening to the show, what are some things that you've taken from what from what we've talked about that, that have helped you or some things, some, some pearls, if you've got some things sure. that if you have somebody who's maybe not listening to our show. Well, why do you listen to the dental yeah, guys, yeah. man? What, what have you taken home? Man, you guys, if anyone's listening to your show, they know it already. You guys are like the podcast for clinical dentistry. Man. Right? It, th- there's no other name in town. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> Thanks, that's, man. That's what it's all about. So uh, a little bit about me. I was at a school for a year doing different associateships, trying to find my way, and then finally I just dove all in and bought this fee-for-service practice. But I found myself like now all of a sudden I'm solo. And I don't have any, like, real mentors to teach me this stuff. And then I found your podcast, and I was like, oh, good. And I I think, like, I was maybe six months into it or something. I don't know how long it was. And I, like, reached out to you guys via Twitter about, like, it was a question about, like, how to cement Emacs crowns, like, how how to bond them. That was a long (laughs) reply. John and I both got involved in that one. And you guys, like, yeah, you you reached reached back out. And we try our best, you know. I mean, a lot of times we can't reply, but, man, it's it's good when we can. So I don't want to set the expectation for the listeners that send them any questions you got, but, like, no, that was was awesome. And so that was a huge clinical thing that you guys helped me out with. And then beyond any tip or single pearl that I've gotten, it's just the tone. Yeah, it, it's just like the, yeah, like I'm so used to hearing other podcasts that we're talking about business and numbers and and the soft stuff, which is important, sure. Sure. But yeah. It's like we need to know this stuff. You know, we, we there's a certain bar, a standard of care that we need to be holding ourselves accountable to, and that's that's missing in conversation with a lot of dentists that, yeah. that I converse with. Yeah, and, and so. that's huge, and and I mean that's we hoped you know, that that would be what comes across from what we're talking about is that it's, you know, and we had this conversation today a little bit more in depth with the Millennial Dentist Podcast people that, you know, you've got to, success in dentistry, we believe, business, like you say, you have to understand business, but true success is a long game. It's a game of being committed to being the best you can be, learning. It's not sexy at first. Right. It's just putting in time. It's, It's learning. It's reading. It's going to the right courses, and then over time, it pays off, and you see the growth in your practice as you grow professionally. So, you know, we've seen that in our own practices, and we're, we're, we're excited because you were telling us earlier today that you've been seeing some exciting growth in your own practice, have. and you've been documenting that essentially in the podcast as far yeah. as, like, so the things you've learned and kind of what you're seeing, right? Right. So yeah. for, for our listeners, one, before we get into what you're doing, is... What was one of your favorite highlights of the last year's podcast uh, that we've released? What what do you, what do you look? What did you look? And you're sure. like, man, that one thing you all yeah. said, or what episode? All right, two things come to mind right off the bat: the the whole endo series. We knew that would be <laughs> yeah. all right. Good, good. All right, yeah. now don't quiz me on what I learned no, on. That's it, right. right. But that that that's like there aren't. I, I'm a podcast junkie, right? There aren't any other podcasts on there that even, like, they might mention that root canals are a thing that dentists do. If you remember, that was the longest root canal of our life. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Yes, it truly was. I do remember. And then, this might be cheating, but, like, I was psyched, right? I was psyched the most recent episode you guys just put out. You were talking about, what is it, the restorative-driven implant pathway? Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. I'm like, I, I've been dragging my feet on implants, and I thought, well, who better to learn from? Than like the guys I already trust. Awesome, you know. For the so you're considering advice. taking the course. I am. That that's means awesome. A lot. 
Yeah, yeah and so what he's referring to is restorative driven implants. And if you, uh, you know, are looking for a place to get trained, 60 hours of CE, yep. man, we'd be glad to have you there. It'd be awesome. Yeah, It'd go to awesome. restorative driven, yes. restorative yeah, so driven implants dot com. Enough about, about us. About enough about yeah. us. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk okay, about you. Man. Let's talk about you. Let's do it. So what so, are you doing? Yeah, what's your podcast all about? Yeah, what's your podcast? Oh, podcast. Oh, Tell our listeners. Yeah, that's what yeah, I want to know. All right. Well, so uh, in a nutshell, my my, my brief story, um, it's the Fee for Service Dentistry Podcast. Okay. Right? Fee for Service Dentist Podcast. And I'm young, right? So people might hear that name and be like, who's this guy claiming to have all the answers? That's not it at all. I don't have the answers. I'm trying to learn them. So I started off my career in a fee for service office. It was awesome. My, it was my dream. It was like, this is my dentist growing up. My plan all along was going to go work for him when his dad retired. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned to practice dentistry. It was just taking good care of people and they're at a network and all that stuff. And, and it's high value and it was awesome. But they weren't busy enough to take me on but two days a week. And then there were no patients there for me. And then I started, it dwindled down to two half days a week. And man, I had student loans to pay off. I was, I was living at home with my parents. Nice. I was trying to save up for a wedding ring to propose to my wife. Um, she said, yes, we're married. <laughs> and so, yeah, don't leave us hanging. You survived. Yeah, right? Let's get that out there. So I picked up some part-time work and some PPO offices, and, and there's a wide range. Uh, this is not a knock on PPO or insurance at all, right, or people that take insurance. But, man, my experience was horrible. I was in this one office and, like, just trying to really do my best for this patient. They, they broke a cusp on 18, and I'm doing a crown prep on them. The owner doc, like, put it on my schedule. He diagnosed it, put it on my schedule during my lunch. And I'm like, all right, I'll step up to the plate, like, I'm here to work hard. Let's do it. I don't need a lunch. And it was he put it for like a 30-minute appointment. I'm like, all oh. right. So I'm like 10 minutes into it. I'm like, I, I don't have a, like, a occlusal reduction tab. I want to make sure I've reduced enough and not taken off too much. And so I go to ask him for it. He's like, what are you doing? Like, you should be done already. Like, 15-minute crown prep. Go take an impression. And I was like, I, wow. I, I've wow. had enough. So this changed your thoughts, and this is why I got into fee-for-service. Uh, and then I bought an office. Right. I was like, I, it was at a breaking point. I had to do something. And on one hand, I saw fee-for-service wasn't really working over here. I'm not really cut out for the PPO. What I perceived is that, that, that turn and burn lifestyle of, you know, I, I didn't feel like I could really do the, treat patients the way I wanted to be treated. That's what it came down to for me. So it wasn't about insurance or not insurance. And then I found this fee-for-service practice that was for sale. And I was like, man, am I going to crash and burn in this thing? Because I, I don't know how to run a dental office. I was a year out of school, right? So I bought it, and I just really put my nose down and, and, and learned as much as I could from a bunch of people out there. And we, praise God, we've had success. You know, we've grown by uh, 20, 24% each year Good. for three years in a row. Awesome. And so I'm just putting my head down and saying, everybody out there is saying, like, fee-for-service dentistry is disappearing. It's going to be gone in five years, 10 years, whatever. And I'm, I'm just fiercely determined to stay out of network with insurance companies for the rest of my career. So my podcast is detailing that journey. I'm asking people who are much smarter than me. I'd love to have you guys on there, by the way, at some point. Just a little plug there. Okay. Um, trying to figure out who's who's doing it right, and let's look up every every month and, and what, how has the industry changed? How can we evolve to stay ahead of the curve? So. That's good. Good for you, man. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. So, yeah. last question. All right. Last question. If there was one show that you would want us to produce, okay, yeah, what would you like to see? What would you like to see? Oh, man. Well, I, I mean, the first thing that came to mind for me was implants. So, I mean, because I, I, that's a thing I have the least experience in. Okay. So, I so mean, just, but, but that can't be done in one show. Right. So. <laughs> now, with implants, I mean, what's the thing you feel that you need to know more about the most? Is it the sure. restorative side? Is it the surgical side? Is it just kind of... Like if there was one thing more, that you could hear us talk about, what would, that would you want you, that, that, that would help you the soonest, I guess. I, it's got to be the restorative side. It's going to help me most immediately okay. right? because I'm restoring them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, that's great to know. I mean, this is, you know, whenever we see somebody who not only is a longtime listener but also is now podcasting, mm -hmm. we it's ex super exciting because we feel like the future of of mentorship to some extent is what we're doing right now. Yeah. You know. You, you've learned from some some things we've put out there. Now you're teaching other people as you're mm -hmm. learning. And that's what right. it's all about. And we're excited for what's going on because we think just like you that there's always going to be a niche for the practice that is doing the best they can possibly do. There are always going to be patients no matter what. 
who are willing to pay for that, who are willing to believe in that. So yeah. good. want you to keep doing what you're doing, keep man. Keep doing hey. it, man. Keep doing Thanks, it. Guys. Keep, keep putting yeah. your head down, like you said. Yeah, That's right. You're That's setting right. the tone for me, so thank you. Thanks yeah. for all that you do. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank Thanks for being on the show. Hey, my pleasure. I'd like to welcome to the show Brian Stimler, right? That is correct. I said it. Sweet. I've been practicing all day for that, so I didn't fail. <laughs> Brian Stimler, tell us where you practice at, man. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, really? Love up yeah. to that mic, man. Yeah. There we go. go. Brooklyn. BK's in the house. No okay. sleep till. <laughs> That's good, man. That's awesome. So you've been a listener for the Don't Guys for quite some time now. Quite some time. Yeah. Tell me, tell me how long you've been a listener. Oh, it's been... At least two years? Almost since the How beginning. How long have I been bugging you guys on? Uh, oh, my goodness. Not bugging. Yeah, from, from back. From I mean, yeah, we've been hearing from you for a, from back a ways. Like, yeah. we awesome. started in 2015. Our first show was released, like, in August or October of uh, 2015. Yeah. I was going to say, towards the end of 2015. Yeah, because we started recording in August, and we recorded ahead of time to make sure it wasn't terrible. Right. You know? <laughs> but uh, so what have you in the beginning, man. Yeah. And yeah. So, so during that time, obviously... I'm sure a lot of things have advanced in your dentistry. Um, yeah. What are what are some things that you've taken from our show um, that you've implemented in your practice, or things that it's helped you to do better? Man, that's a that's a loaded question there. So yeah, so um, I, you know one of, one of the reasons that I love listening to you guys too, as well, is um, you know I, I like the fact that uh, one of the first episodes I heard was something where you guys are like what are you, you know what, what are you gonna you're going to do right for your patient, right? Like Tripod pain. implants? Yeah. yeah. Doing the right thing. Yeah. 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 But doing the right thing, and that resonates with me. And, um, you know, so that was a that was a huge selling point, I guess, for myself was was to hear that and, and just put the confidence back in myself, I think. Um, at that time, I had just really opened an office. I was a year into my own office. So it was uh, it was really nice to, to hear some established dentists um, kind of just backing up, I think, what I, my approach to dentistry. It's good. You know, so that was a... It's a confidence builder for, mm-hmm. for a young dentist to, to hear something like that. So to to not, you know, like, like you guys have said in a, one of the Root Canal episodes, you know, you, you get your post off and it's all of a sudden it's short, right? You had a little tug back, uh, you know, when you had like a heated instrument in there. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to close it up and send your patient home? No. You know, you need to back in there and fix it. Dude, excellent, that. excellent, man. I mean, so, that's great. Yeah, that was big. That, that uh, gave me some confidence in my own practice. That's good. So... As far as, like, tell us a little bit about um, your practice from a standpoint of what do you do? I mean, are you fully general dentistry, or what, what are you doing in your practice right now? We're doing a lot of stuff. I've, uh, my, my office has grown a bit, so I don't do a lot of surgical. Um, I, I have a periodontist that comes in on Fridays, and we're onboarding an associate right now that places implants. And she'll be uh, placing implants, um, you know, Mondays and Fridays as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big uh, I'm a big fan of cosmetics and um, cool and I love occlusion all right so uh, you know general yeah we do a lot of gen- uh, general um, I have a pretty strict demographic I'm like right. age group 25 to 45 so. so what you know you've been listening to the show since the beginning obviously you know we've done a lot of different shows what show stands out to you as I know you said this that one did. But, like, in the past year, you know, since last year, what, what do you think has stood out to you as, like, one of your favorite episodes? Uh, I would say two. There was the, uh, the whole thing on endo. And, uh, and for me, that breakdown was, was really awesome. Um, to rewind to the earlier question, one of the other reasons that I love this show is I'm just, I'm a research nerd, too. You know, in, in my backpack on the way here was all my podcast stuff. And a, a journal of process. Uh, there you process. go, JPD, baby. <laughs> well, yes. you, yeah, you had uh, you had actually said something. I remember on, on when we had interacted with you once, and, and you were actually saying, "Hey, well, I read this. You know, what do you guys think about that?" Yeah. And, and that's the thing that we love is we're now starting to get people that've listened to us for a while that they are reading the journals. Maybe they weren't before. Maybe they were. But now we're having discussions with other people about journals. And as nerdy as that sounds, dude, as you know, that's what makes sure that we're doing it right. Yeah. And, and so when you can have a high-level discussion with another clinician about whether or not you should listen to this study or, well, let me show you another study and mm-hmm. which, which one's the best, uh, a lot of people, they kind of don't understand that. But really, that's the thing that, I mean... How do we learn what's right? That's how we learned in dental school is, is from 
instructors that hope that hopefully somebody who's back there reading the freaking research. Yeah. And you're doing that in your practice. And when it comes down to, you know, what type of incisal preparation do you put on your veneer? Yeah. You know, when you, you want to get to brass tacks, man, how many people doing veneers can actually say they know why they're putting a butt joint or are they going over to the lingual? Yeah, is where's that your better? margin? Is that yeah, worse? exactly. Right. How do you how do you do that? And what do you do? So you said endo is a big one. Going back to some of those original ones, you know, just challenging yourself to just do it right, you know. Yeah. So tell me about this. If you could pick out one clinical thirty minute to an hour like video of us teaching you a concept with, it could be with a patient. It could be not. It could be hand, it could be us showing you on a patient this procedure, but teaching it from the ground up in thirty minutes to an hour. What procedure would you like to see? I don't know if it would be a procedure. I, I think what I uh, you know back to my my occlusion love and, and the other episode that I, I like that you guys did was was all the all the discussion on occlusion. I think the um, the analysis of of breakdown. Okay. I think that would be I think it would be really interesting because I think a lot of dentists can identify it, right. you know, some level of breakdown. There is something here that is going on. So you're talking can, about the types of wear patterns on patients' teeth? Yeah, I mean. Types that, of damage. That'd be a fantastic place to start. Okay. Yeah. I think we always look at breakdown as, uh, oh, they're grinding. Yes. Yeah. Is, it, is it? Is it always grinding? It's great. Or is, so let's, is there So acid? basically, types of damages to the dentition and yeah. define those and why they occur. Yeah. And that'd be a good show for you or yeah, even a absolutely. good video yeah. and showing that. Yeah, okay. that's great. That's 100%. great. And that's we're going and we're going to be heading out, you know, Wes and I are yeah, in our own education, we're going to be doing, taking Spears Born Dentition workshop uh, coming up in April. So, we'll definitely be talking more about that uh, after we're out there anyway. So, that may also hit some of the things you're talking about uh, and and you know, because I think that's a common question people have is well, what's causing the wear and then how would we treat it differently if we know the etiology? Because sometimes, if, once you know the ideology, you're going to treat it completely differently. 100%. You know? Good so. for you, man. Really awesome. appreciate you, man. Longtime listener. Yeah. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks Keep a lot. Keep what you guys are doing, man. I love it. Keep spreading the word about the dental guys, too, man. Yeah, I'm on it. All right. <laughs> I, got all, I got all my residents watching yeah. you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks guys. a lot for being on, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, this <laughs> is one of my favorite listeners, I have to confess. <laughs> Thank and, you. And, uh, yeah, I don't say that to all the girls or guys, I promise. <laughs> I'm just saying that. And, that, and, and John's got a little bro love going on I here. Do. I do. Bro, there's a bromance here. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, you know, the reason for this, I just have to say, is because you're one of the few people who has actually posted journal articles on a Facebook conversation. Boom. We have, we have had a, a small journal debate. Which I we love. Did. We which did. I we did. love. That and, was so and it's good. Been, and, it, and it's just, you bring it. You're not just going, hey, I, I just wonder about this. You're like, actually, here it is right here. So Boom. that's what he loves because, or both of us really, because it's like the show me attitude. Like, I want you to show me. That's, I am from Missouri. Yeah. So there we go. Oh, there we go. I love there it. We go. There we go. Show me state. Yeah. Uh, you guys do a great show. Thank you for doing what you do. All of us that listen to you, we get something out of every episode. I recognize the time you guys put into every episode. I know you don't, you're not going in dry. You're going in researched. It's awesome. Uh, you guys asked me, you know, what episode might have um, given me the most inspiration in my practice. It was kind of a tie between the Endo series, you know, the longest root canal ever, which I know is four episodes, <laughs> not one, and then Walmart in a Bottle, the bonding agent review. Very cool. So those, those were... And the last those, those year really kind of stood out to you. Yeah. 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 Those were those were really good. That endo I I love doing endo. I it's one of my favorite procedures. What, so what getting did you change? Did, yeah, you, did you change anything? Okay, so I'm like ready to change something, but it's you know kind of changes you got to work your way you into gotta it. Got to work up to it. Um, yeah. so that uh, you guys recommended a rinse. Yep. MTAD. And MTAD. MTAD. I don't have it yet. I got some, you, know, you kind of got to use up some product before sauce, you man. jump into oh, special yeah. products. Yeah. So I, I'm getting there. Um, and I believe you guys recommended a Discovery Burr. I can't remember the name of it right now. For access. It, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. And yeah. that's that's another one that uh, I'm going to incorporate soon. So that that was good. So and just you, the review of it was yeah. fantastic. What are you using for bonding right now? I'm, I'm a Prelude 
okay. user. Oh, that's right. That's We've a, talked about that. We have. Yes. Uh, that's, Bertolotti. That's a Bertolotti, Bertolotti guy, man. And, you know, have the, you seen him? Have oh, you yeah. seen him a lately? couple times. Have you no, seen not him lately. lately. Not lately. He's no. like retreated out to California completely now. Like that's, he used to go on the circuit more. Yeah, but that's because that's what we heard while. him. We heard him like when he was on circuit. He was just in St. Louis, which is is oh. a few hours away from me. Oh, man. Uh, a few months ago, and I was out of town, and I had to miss him. Uh, so that was that was devastating. <laughs> but we're, we're thinking about going out to his Yosemite course. Uh, which one? one? Of, well, he is. Every year he does a fall Yosemite course, or at least okay. he used to. I haven't been there in a few years, but he was doing it, every, and he would bring in a speaker. Usually Ruiz. Well, I, I, that's right. Ruiz has been there. I saw him when Ed McLaren was out there. This is Oh, that's ago. big, yeah. Yeah, and, and so I'm kind of like looking right now for like, I would love to jump back in there. And we see really want to jump back into this. It's been like four this. or five years since I've seen him. Yeah. Bertolotti has had more of an influence on me than just about anyone other than maybe Gordon Christensen wow. yeah, that's for, big. for practice for what I do. And so Prelude's not a new product, but it was solid. The best part about that Walmart in a bottle was that you guys had me take something that I've been using for a decade and actually look at the Break ingredients and the chemicals behind it rather than just, you know, I've just been following the directions. It's worked great, but it's nice to know what's, what you're actually using, Why? what you're because actually you're doing. Because you're sitting there thinking, like, man, this is impacting what I'm doing. I better sure. scrub or I better do exactly. And that's the reason why yeah. we like Bertolotti, too, because he's the same way. He's a geek. He's yeah. like, let me show you the why, and then you test whether or not it works clinically. But let me first show you why I'm doing what I'm doing and the evolution of it. And that's something that, you know, we're, we would... As we've talked about this before. Like, if we get Bertie Lottie on the show, oh my goodness! Oh man, That's that coming. would be a geek I fest so. and like nothing else, else man. Uh, oh my he, goodness! I mean, he's he's just like you guys. He's research. He's like, if the research says it, then we'll do it. Yeah. But if it doesn't, you know, it's not so, gonna. So if there was a if there was a topic or a show, yeah, we're taking notes here, man. That, okay. Yeah, that you would like to see us cover something that would be. Like man, this is my dream show or my dream. Yeah, this topic. is the Zach show. Like yeah, uh, yeah, the perfect well, show for Zach. Give us, give us something, even if it's something we've covered that you want to know more about. Oh man, now you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, because sorry. You've, you've covered. You see, I was bugging you guys to cover Endo, and then you did it in a big way. <laughs> we did it good, didn't and we? Yeah, man? yeah, you knocked you knocked that out of the park. <laughs> I've I've wanted you guys to cover Crown Impressions, and then that article from Jada came out, and you did it. <laughs> So you knocked that out of the park. Okay, um, let's change the question then. Let's uh, change the question. So we're reading your mind, basically. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you are kind of yes. Like usually, every time I ask something, you're like, "Well, just wait," and it's because it's, you know we've <laughs> we got, just recorded we've that. We got it in the in the in, the, in the, you know it's on the books. Right. right. So, so let me ask you this. Yep. If you could take a show and put it in a more educational video format, <clears throat> like a how-to, okay? Okay. Thirty minutes to an hour. Okay, with us doing the clinical and the science, understanding how to do it, like actually showing like procedural stuff. procedural okay. stuff. And okay. what? Give me, give me some, give me, give me a, give me two, because I know you probably got two. Okay. All right, two that you would love to see. Well, we t we talked about this. You guys were going to show an anesthetic technique. I'm yeah. pretty sure. You, yeah. So I'm pretty sure what I'm asking for is probably something you're already working on, or maybe not. Maybe. You no. Know. Maybe. And then the if other we, thing I like told you to we'd see, have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I I want you guys when you did the impression episode, you were talking about how you guys both or well, take that back. One of you guys, I can't remember which one now. One of you guys uses lasers for I almost do. all the your cord retraction. The other one uses electrosurge. I can't. John. Yeah. Your electrosurge. Yeah. Yeah. Your okay. I have never gotten the result from a diode, the Picasso, that I have from it's the good old Picasso. standard. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that I have from dual cord. So. Oh, well, now, okay, that's why we need that to show you, because there's applications and reasons behind double cord technique and curatage with electrosurge sure. and curatage with a laser. But okay. you would like to see it. I see. guess I'd like to see it. And, and certainly. And understand where to choose which one. Okay, and, and, and maybe my laser's no good. I, I, I don't no, know. No, the, no, I, I, know I, I don't know the answer to that. I was but, um Obviously, AMD publishes all kinds of videos you can watch on YouTube for nothing. Uh, but I just, but in from my hands, I haven't gotten the the results that uh, I can get from the good old double double pack. But you guys obviously do get those results, or you wouldn't 
you would be using double pack if if if, sure. uh, if you weren't happy with and, what you were getting. And a most recent uh, article was published that John and I'll probably go over maybe in a Geeks Corner. Yeah, it talked about double cord versus laser. Yep, and it showed that and both, recession risk. And recession you know, risk. That's another question with this is, you know, is there a downside to say electrosurgery or laser? versus double core as far as recession. So we're that's actually something we've got. We do have that someone on our radar as far as discussing it. Okay. Yeah. But a video could be interesting too to actually show not only what we do, but then what the impression looks like or what right. the scan looks right. like. Right, what well, the scan, and impression, all that. The best part is that you'd be coming from laser, yeah, electrosurge. Well, we just show, um, it, listen, when we do something like this, okay, when? Yeah, right, right. I know the when. <laughs> right. I, I hear you. When we I do something you. like this, it's going to be all techniques. It's going to be all impression techniques. It's going to be done right. It's good. It's coming from. I would expect no less. Well, that's why I tune hey, in. Take it to the yeah. next level. We're going to bring it. We're going to bring it. We really appreciate Fantastic. you because you, you bring it. Yes. <laughs> you bring it. So, Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for being Thanks. on. You guys man. do what you do. Yeah, you thanks. bet. Thanks. thanks. So, the next person, listener on the show, fan. Of yeah. the dental guys. Love up on that mic, man. Big fan. Become a podcaster right now. This is it. <laughs> My That's first right. podcast. This is Jace Apple, Apple Grin. And Jace, thank you so much for listening to our show. You, how long have you been listening to our show? Uh, well, I was late to the party. Um, I actually heard about it from Brad, the dental lab guy. Ah. Um, and so I, I work in Wisconsin. And uh, he brought it up to me and didn't take long to you know listen to them on 1.5 speed and get all caught up. So I've been listening now for uh, about a year. How does that come across... Our voice is at 1.5. It is very weird talking to you now and hearing how your voices are. <laughs> that's hilarious. The actual voice. I don't think I've ever met somebody that's listened to me at 1.5. That's hilarious. It's <laughs> hilarious. It's definitely a way to get work done fast, that's for sure. Yeah. Right. So over this last year, as you've been kind of getting caught up um, and, and working with Brad, you have already an idea of, of uh, kind of what we're about. Um, what have been some things that you've taken to your practice that have helped you to either better understand what you're doing or new techniques or just tell, you know, how, how has it helped you? Right. So I think on any other podcast, this might sound a little weird, um, but knowing you guys, it's, it's really just doing good dentistry. And there's so many things within that, um, you know, caring for your patients, going to the right courses and implementing them, um, picking the right products. Uh, a lot of it's research. And I know you guys like to geek out with that. And being a biology major, I hated research. It was, you know, the death of me in, in college. But now when I'm out and it's something I'm passionate about and, and following up with what materials work, you know, what crowns have the best strength, things like that, it's, it's just, it, I still don't call it research. I kind of just call it, oh, I'm reading, you know, up the latest, the latest uh, news. But uh, it's just how you guys handle the day-to-day -day and, and caring, caring for patients. It, it's That's great. really big for me. So... Talk about crown strength, just for instance. When someone asks you now, now that you've listened to some of our shows and kind of thought more about that, when someone says, what type of crown should I use? What, what's your response to that, to like a new dentist say? Because now you're kind of the experienced guy. Even though you may still feel like a young guy, you've actually been doing stuff for a while. So what do you tell somebody who asks that question, having listened to our show and gone to courses about material selection for crowns? Say for like, I don't know, say a maxillary molar, you know, what are you using now in your practice? Kind of why are you using it? Tell us about that. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, so I'm using, uh, I, I use the um, dental crafters, and so I, I do a lot of Endura or the Bruxer crowns. Um, you know, I've seen... That's full contour zirconium. Yep, full contour zirconium. And, uh, you know, I've seen, I've only been out for two and a half years, and I've seen so many Emax crowns uh, that have come in with the shattered buckle plate or shattered right across the occlusal on um, on maxillary molars, uh, and mandibular molars, and I just don't think it has the strength that you need uh, that's doing the patient justice. Okay. 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 It's good. Interesting. Interesting. So, okay, if you had the ability to, you know, set our production schedule and have any show produced that you would want. What is a topic or an area that you would like to see us cover? In a hey, what's the show? Apple Grin special. ideal <laughs> special? Yeah. Um, what do you I, want to know more about? Yeah, I know the last episode was on implants, and uh, it's something I'm passionate about. Um, but I think, you know, even setting up for implants, uh, extractions, oral surgery techniques, um, grafting, grafting materials, um, okay. you know, how to preserve that site so that it makes the next step 
you know. So the setup better. process. So extraction technique and grafting. Yeah. Right. With implants in mind. Yes, yep. exactly. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this question. Let's say that you could take a technique and you could put it in 30 minutes to an hour and we could present that to you with live patient possibly. You know, you would be able to view a video or whatever it might be of us explaining the scientific thoughts and theories behind it and then actually showing the procedural result of that what you just had presented and put that in a package that you know we could deliver to you. What technique or procedure would you like to see most? Hmm. Um, it's tough. I, I think I would say maybe switch up things a little bit and go with focusing on root canals and so actually show the root canal process. Yeah, and it's it. I don't know. It'd be a tough thing to you know have a camera in there, but with today's technology, I'm sure it could be done. But uh, just. I don't do a lot of molar endo, and I think that it's something that I'd, I'd like to get into a little bit more. Right, and how many years out of school are you? Uh, two and a half. Awesome. I graduated in 2015. So I have to say, at my point in my career, I was where you were at, okay? I was about, and I tell this story on the endo episode, that I, and I'm going to encourage you right now, because I was frustrated. And I was a year out of residency. Um, I had good training in residency when it came to endo. I was doing endo on... Uh, veterans that had calcified canals and struggling and even with the training there that I had still struggling and so I quit doing molar endo because it wasn't predictable in my hands and so I dropped it and I started referring all of it but I hired an office manager early on that and I told her when I hired her I said I want you to push me and she questioned me why I quit doing molar endo and she pushed me and so what I want to do is I want to push you a little bit okay because you're a young dentist and you seem like you're smart and what I'd like to say is I think you need to go take a course in how to do molar endo because it'll change your practice big time. John will tell you this too. Is that yeah, same for me. It's, it's, it's a practice changer. As much as we love implant dentistry, there, there are things that you can do to, to, to save it predictably, and one of those is molar endo. Yeah, and there's now, really no replacement for a high-quality hands-on course, although we appreciate the feedback too, though, on the video stuff you want to see right. because we think the videos – are super helpful. Right, there's things that we can well. show with technology, you're right, that could help a, help a clinician like yourself do molar endo. Yeah, but I think early in my career, a course on molar endo, endodontics in general, a hands-on course that I went out and took uh, with one of the masters was a huge game changer for me because you know, of all the things we do in dentistry, the things that build your practice probably the most, it's a patient coming in in pain, and being able to execute an excellent molar root canal without having to send them somewhere else, which they never want to go somewhere else, that's why they're there, and you take that emergency patient who maybe doesn't know you, they come in, they're willing to do whatever it takes, Man. and now they're a patient for life. You and know, that's my, really something, if you get good at it, it can make a big difference and set you up, too, for future implants, future restorative. That whole family of that patient often becomes a, a patient. Now, you know how that works when you get somebody out of pain. And here's the thing. You know, me being in practice for 15 years... I have seen a few of my molar endos fail. And now I'm having a conversation that, you know, we got 12, 13 years out of that, and they're, like, super-duper appreciative. I'm not apologetic in any way. And I know that I'm not perfect. And it was it my fault? I don't know. I take a CT of these cases, and MB2s filled, all these things, and things sometimes just things don't work out. But you know what? They've got my trust. Well, and we're better now than we ever have been with CT technology. Right at being able to choose our cases. Right. And I think, too, that that's, that's where we're also heading in endo, is changing everything, is, you know, being able to have better case selection than we ever could before. So It's good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's good, good stuff, stuff, man. Yeah, we appreciate you being a listener. Hey, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks yeah and we're, we're on planning on having Brad back on here really soon. We were just talking about that. Do you enjoy having him on the show? Yeah, uh, Brad's great. And, uh, it, I mean, he really does know his stuff. Uh, he, he's always approachable. Anyone at the lab is. It's, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Wonderful right. Him. Well, you know, what he's doing right here, what you just did, is you plugged one of our sponsors, the Dental Crafters Network. Yep. And so if you're listening to this right now, you're hearing a user of the Dental Crafters Network. And, uh, yeah, we're not, you know, this is a sponsor, yeah, but here's one of their And you were you know, using customers. them before you started listening to our show, before, right? Before, he actually introduced me to the podcast, and it, right. was, it was great. Right, awesome. so, you know, if you're looking for a high-quality uh, network of, you know, where they try to put it all together, hey, the Dental Crafters Network, 1-800-472-8302, <laughs> all right? So, man, thank you Jace, so much. Thanks, thanks for being on the show, man. Appreciate it.
Well, I'll tell you one thing that I got from this and, and is humbling. Um, yeah. Big time because yeah. it's, this is why we do it. Uh, mm-hmm. after finishing that fan show, um, it was really just, it may encourage John and I basically just to keep doing what we're doing. You know, yeah. and this isn't what we do for a living. You know, we do this, you know, yeah, we have a sponsorship that helped pay for some equipment, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. And we appreciate them and all that. And right. that, that allows us to do some other things, which is cool. But look, this, this is why we do it. We yeah. do it for the fans. We do it for the people that are listening to us. We do it for the people that text us questions and ask us things. And, and yeah, we, we try to answer everything. We may not get to you and I, and, and, but we try to do our best. And yeah. we started and people come on this show and they talk about what's changed their own practice. And it's, yeah. it makes you feel like what you're doing is, is making a difference and, mm-hmm. uh, in other people and the way they think. And, you know, I think again, we, we found that there's a, there's a certain, uh, percentage at least of dentists who, who feel that, um, they do want to take their dentistry to the next level. Right. And they, uh, are seeking us out and, they're telling people about us, and because of that, we've seen some amazing growth, um, and and people starting to take notice. And we didn't ever expect. I think I you're about to say we, that, Wes. I mean, when we started the show, yeah. that was not really what we expected. We weren't we weren't really going that direction. We just wanted to talk about some things we were passionate about. Yeah, three years ago in 2015, John and I, about this time, we started talking about that and what we should do, and uh, we recorded a few episodes in, uh, 2015 and said, well, let's throw it out there. Yeah. And, uh, we were already talking. So we were like, why don't record it? And, wow. and here we are. And, and here we are fans coming to a show. I mean, to it wasn't us. just to see us, I mean, but there were some people that yeah. mainly came there to see our show. And that's very, well, let me man, just say it makes this. you Amazing. makes you feel really special. Right. Well, and so we appreciate you, everybody that was you're there. You're listening to this right now. Thank you so much. But here's what we need. Mm-hmm. Here's what we need. Bring it. We, we need your help. And what do we need your help with? Well, as fans of the show, you just heard some of our listeners talk about some of their favorite shows and some of the things that they've learned from the dental guys and some of the things that they were just excited to hear us cover. Uh, everything from Endo to you heard to Walmart in a Bottle to how we cover the AO and um, the recaps that we do on certain things like that or, or, or you know, a wild ranging, you know, different things. And John and I have, listen, we, are, we don't lack for topics, but um, we want your input. And so what I want you to do right now, as soon as you're done listening to this, do it right now because if you're like me, you'll forget. And we want you to hit us up on Twitter, at The Dental Guys, or... On Facebook, you can send us a message, you can post it to our wall, you can private message us, whatever, whatever. we need your help. We want to know what you want to hear about, and we want to, to direct the show towards clinical topics. We love talking clinical. Yeah, we like talking business too. You know, we, we, we try to mix in a little bit of that too. That's important. And if you want to hear some of those things, we want to hear that too. You know, this isn't primarily an interview show. We have brought certain people on that are authorities to certain areas. Is there someone, maybe at Spear Education, that we haven't had on yet that, um, that you might want to hear? Is there a particular type of clinical person that has a technique that you want to hear them come on and we ask questions surrounding that topic? Yeah, cause what, and, and, and especially people that... You know, again, uh, don't don't send us <clears throat> don't send us somebody that's been <laughs> yeah, I don't on want, every show yeah. that's just goes and makes the rounds selling their stuff because yeah. we're not that's interested. That's not the in audience. That. We're not interested. No, in that. what what we want is we want the people that are changing dentistry, the people that are if we're gonna have somebody on the show, we're not just gonna put somebody on there because um, they're selling something and that we right. want to fill our slot. You know, it's gotta be somebody that's that's quality. Um, and we want the people that are maybe you know, the ones that are that are creating controversies in a good way, uh, asking questions. We want scientists, researchers who are making a difference. We want clinicians that are blowing our minds. Uh, and we will ask them the toughest questions we can so that we can learn better and you guys can learn better through us. So if you got ideas on people, send us, send us some ideas. Mm. If you got ideas on topics or products you want us to talk more about, products you want us to review, 
Um, we've, we've done more of that and we've gotten a great response from that. Yeah, if you want to hear more about know. Botox, you know, we, we never have done a Botox type nope. topic and what that all even means. I mean, right. Some of you might be interested in that. Some of you think, well, how do you even make money at Botox and how, how does that build mm -hmm. your practice? I mean, things like that. That's cool. Um, we are excited about 2018. Uh, we're excited about the future of the dental guys. There are some mm -hmm. amazing things coming. Yeah. Um, we also want to um, make sure that you respond quickly because our year is filling up fast. Yeah, um, that's true. And so we need to know very, very fast what you want so that we can put these things on a list and, and cover them in a methodical way because you know us. We go to the books. We also yeah. go to the empirical. We also try to find people that maybe maybe can bring it. And yep. so, we and this also, show doesn't come together the day of. No, it sir. Comes, it comes together usually <laughs> Over, a couple months before, right? After a lot of uh, reading and discussion. And as right. one person said at the Voices of Industry, they said, "You know what you guys do? I mean, it's not easy. That's the reason why <laughs> nobody's doing it. Is because yeah. it's it's not easy. Like it's easy yeah. to just kind of put somebody on the interview and just go, ah, well." Let's just let them talk, you know, right. and we'll just sort of make some jokes about what they're saying or ask them what their favorite soda is. That one goes out to uh, <laughs> somebody special that knows probably. Right. Uh, Somebody's but, a you know, faithful We're listener. not going to ask people what their favorite soda is on this show. Uh, we're going to we're going to ask them what particular type of bonding system they use and why they think that fifth generation is better than sixth. You know, that's right. And and if they can't answer that question, well, that's OK. Like we're all going to learn together. And right, we've got what it's we've got about. some special sponsors coming on too, um, mm -hmm. and I and I really appreciate those guys. We're not going to mention names right now, yep. but uh, not quite we're excited there, about but we're, that. But we're headed, but let me we're just tell you, way. let me let me just change stream a little bit. But John and I are super excited about restorative driven implants. We'll say this, mm -hmm. and we'll be done. Is that we are seeing people sign up for this, which I'm blind, my kind of mind blown, like right now. I mean, I've been teaching <laughs> dental implants. John's been teaching dental implants, but you know, the spring session. You know, we're going to have some, we're going to have some people there. It's going to be amazing. Um, yeah. Already filling up, man. It's listen, crazy. 60 hours of CE. You listen, two full days of, um, of, you know, hands on live patient uh, care directed mm -hmm. with just highly clinically trained yeah. people. State of listen, the art clinic. State of the art. It's amazing. Go to restorativedrivenimplants.com right now and click on the about or click on the contact us. Hey, we want you to sign up. We want you to hear. Yeah. It may not be you this are, spring. You already know, you already know we're going to do it right. So, it, well, that's I'm going to do it halfway. I'm going to do it halfway. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah ex right. Like you, you know, know what's that, great too is we're going to bring top quality people. Brad the dental lab guys a oh, part man. of this, you know? Yes. So it's yes. You're going to get top you know? quality lab, top quality surgeons, right. top quality restorative stuff. You're going to have, you know, lab techs on site. You're going to have somebody who knows how to implement implants. You're going to have a dental assistant teaching your dental assistants. I mean, this is, I, I don't know if you, if you come out of this and you don't feel comfortable placing routine, you know, simple dental implants, then we we've messed up, you know, because we're going to try to teach you even more than we think you need to know, because that's just how we roll. Right. Love it, John. Hey, listen, if you're listening to the dental guys right now, thank you so much. And, um, we, we need you to go over there and like us on Facebook. As we always say, Follow us on Twitter. Remember, we have a YouTube channel where you can watch us talk there as well. Yeah. Any of you iTunes do that, review. iTunes review is huge for us. And so uh, this concludes this episode. And for Wes and John, we are the Dental Guy.